And so I wanted to ask, remember when we did the live on Instagram and you said the time when we trained together, so that was seven years ago or no, yep. eight years yep. ago, uh, you were focusing a lot on just like some isolations where players were, were dribbling the ball and all that. And now you're talking yep. more about the concepts, about the angles for a sideline pick and roll. What would you recommend to people who don't understand yet the trends, who don't understand the spacing, what they should study? Wow. So basically, it's all about how you watch basketball. Um, if you watch basketball from a fan standpoint, like someone who just likes to see, you know, the highlights and all that good stuff, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, anyone can do that. So if, if that's your perspective, you're going to get trapped into that will then like help you formulate your training. Right. So when I like Bossy said, when I first started my business, I didn't have a lot of playing experience at the time. Right. So, you know, my perspective on the game was solely based on my my small amount of experience as a player and also my perspective as a fan who watched the game. And so it was very simple for me to get out of that funk. Someone explained it to me. And basically what you have to do is when you watch the game, watch what happens when the ball crosses half court with everyone else that doesn't have the ball. And it, it blew my mind. Like, it... it forced me to now begin to see that this wasn't a game of layups, dunks, and three-pointers. This was a game of, like, cutting, screening, spacing, spotting up, you know, moving, posting, like, all the beautiful things that are taking place off the ball. So, for instance, uh, if, you know, we were playing five-on-five five and Bossy brings the ball down the floor, unless we're all just standing still, there are things that happen every single time down the floor that allow Bossy to then decide what he's going to do, right? We might all just start in spots, the corners, the wings, the low block, the high post, right? Then after he initiates our offense with a pass or he dribbles to a spot, now these other things begin to happen. So now the same way that I was, was taught, all right, watch the four people off the ball when the ball crosses out court. The next step was watch what the person does who just had the ball after they make the first pass. Okay. And so it's like, it's a continuation, right? It's like throwing a stone into a lake or into a body of water. It just continues to get wider and wider. The ripples continue to, to flow outward. And so offense is based on those principles, spacing, right? You want eight to 10 feet of space in between everyone on offense, unless we're screening, right? Like, or we're setting a ghost screen, like a fake screen unless I'm driving at you for a DHO, right? So if I dribble at Bossy and I'm on the wing and he's in the corner, he's going to come up towards me or he's going to cut back door to keep the spacing, right? So normally, unless we're screening or doing a dribble handoff, we're all spaced out. So, okay, I had to learn, like, I'm looking for spacing. Why are they moving this way or that way? If the ball's driven, where do people move? If he goes baseline, somebody slides corner. If he goes middle, someone fills up. If he drives at the guy in the low post, the guy lifts either to the elbow or he spaces the short corner. And I was like, man, those are drills right there. You know, that's a film breakdown right there. So, okay. And then I just kept looking for now angles. The, the game of basketball is played on a court that never changes. Right, it's a rectangle, obviously, that's split down the middle in half by the half court. The three-point line, it's not exactly a semicircle, you know, it's more like an oval, but those parameters don't change, right? They moved it in a little bit some years ago and then they moved it back out. But there's no four pointer or five pointer unless you're playing in the big three. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's the same. If you just pay attention to angles on the court, you now can understand why someone like a Michael Jordan would drive to the elbow so much or would post up on the low block or would attack the midline and why Kobe would say, I'm going to copy Mike. Like, I'm going to do the same thing as him. So getting back to Bossy's original question, if you're trying to elevate and move on from just watching the game from a fan's perspective or trying to understand the game on a deeper a deeper level, all you have to do is start paying attention to what the people are doing off the ball. And they all within every offensive system or philosophy, 
they all mimic themselves. It's, it's normally the same. Someone's receiving an off ball screen on the weak side. There's going to end up being a ball screen on the strong side, right? And either the person that's getting the off ball screen on the weak side is either going to be cutting uphill. That means they're coming from the baseline to high or they're going downhill from, you know, half court area towards the baseline. So like, it's, it's not a whole lot to get confused about. The confusion is just in like the order. So does it yep. start with an off ball screen or an on ball screen? Does it start with a cut? You know, does it start with the ball being thrown in the post first? You know, so basketball is a simple game, man. Like, it's, it's such a simple game, but it takes a genius to understand it. And I don't even know how that <laughs> statement makes sense, <laughs> but it does. And I feel like everybody kind of, you know, agrees with it. Like, you, you really never get it all because every time we think we got it, a new player shows us a new level. Like LeBron, like, he's different, right? So we think we've seen it all with Mike and, you know, and another player comes and then Giannis comes and then Steph Curry, you know, and it's like, ah, you want to pull your hair out, you know, because you think you know how to break down film. Steph Curry shows you, nah, throw that out the window. Like you got to be able to shoot from 35 feet out, you know? So uh, I, I, I'd say don't ever lose the heart of a fan. You know what I mean? Like where you just love the game, but you do have to take that hat off as a coach or as just someone trying to break down film. You can't do it from a, a fan perspective. 